So when I was in Walmart, I found this kit and I thought it would be fun to do. I've made um, crystals using different things in the past. Like in college, we made um, rock candy and it basically used crystals to make it. And then I've used pipe cleaners and I believe it was borax and hot water to make crystals on pipe cleaners. So I'm very interested in this kit because like right here you can see in this rainbow that there are crystals so I'm wondering how well it sticks to the paper and if it actually works. So this is everything this kit comes with. So this is the directions and it has one, two, three, four, five, five different things you can do in this kit. Crystallizing art is the one that I think I'm going to try first. So I'm doing crystallizing art and so I have everything that I need. I have the watercolors, paper, and paintbrush, and the salt because it comes with all that. However, it has three cups, not included, water, not included, teaspoon, and, and a pencil, they're also not included. So it doesn't come with everything that you need. So I don't have cups. So I'm having to use these little containers. And I'm a little bit confused because it says three cups that can hold one fourth cup of water not included. But then in step two it says in three of the cups add one fourth teaspoon of salt and one half teaspoon of water each. So why does it need to hold one fourth cup of water? when we're pouring in one half teaspoon of water each. Because as far as I can understand, you don't add more water or anything to it. So if I'm understanding this, which there's a good chance I'm not, but if I'm understanding the directions, I, I went ahead and I put one half teaspoon of water in each of these and then one fourth teaspoon of salt. And then I guess I, dab my paintbrush in the water and pick my color and transfer it in there if I'm understanding this. So in directions two it says to try to pick up as much of the color as you can and mix it into a salt water cup. Stir until dissolved. Add more paint if needed, clean your brush, and repeat the next two colors. And then in step one, it says to choose three colors that blend well, like red, yellow, and blue. So I went ahead and this is red. It looks more orange, yellow, and blue. And then it says to dip your brush into your <clears throat> salt water pans <clears throat> to start your design. And then once you're done with your design, let your artwork dry. In a couple of hours, you will start to see crystals forming on your painting. So I'm really curious to see if this actually works. And now I just need to wait a couple of hours to let it dry and see if any crystals form. When I was painting, the paint did kind of spread and bleed into each other, but overall I think it just makes it look a little bit cooler, but if you didn't want it to bleed into each other, I could see where that would be a pain. So while I'm waiting for this to dry, I tried one of the other things, and so it has these, um, what they're calling diffusing paper, and so you fold it into a triangle, you use the markers, draw it in a circle, and then you just dip the tip in the water. I didn't read the directions carefully enough, so I stuck the whole thing on the first one in the water, and so it didn't turn out very well. So I'm trying it again. So I just kind of scribbled and I also used two color markers and it only tells you to use one so I just want to see what happens.
It's slowly starting to creep up. And my arm is starting to get tired. <laughs> So the diffusing paper, I didn't mention it or show you, but they're three different shapes. So they're not circles like the pictures show. So you have a star, you had a hexagon, and like this flower looking shape. So now I'm going to try the crystal resist painting. And since it came with this little canvas, I'm going to use it on that and see how well that works. Okay, so step one says to plan out your design and colors. So I'm going to use a kitty and I want the colors to be kind of exploding away from him I guess and as for the colors I'll just pick some bright ones and then it says to prep the paper dip a clean paintbrush in water and coat your paper this ensures your artwork does not dry out too quickly so the salt can react with the pigment so I guess you just put water all over it that's what I'm gonna do anyway so I added the colors and I should have just went over the cat with the black marker and I started to do that after I painted it but then I'm just going to touch the paint and the paint's going to end up drying by the time I get around to finishing it. So it says to take a small pinch of Epsom salt and sprinkle over your artwork. You will see the, tr the color starburst away from the salt creating a crystal pattern. So let me get my salt. Okay, so I got my salt. I'm going to see what happens. I am not seeing anything happening. Happens. So I went back over it with water and then I, then I added more um, salt. And as you can see, like right here, it did kind of pull the colors away from the salt I guess and then right here I'm going to get a new piece of paper and do the same thing with just a small area area and see what happens So I don't really see the color bursting away from the salt. So I did follow the directions exactly. I did use water that wasn't exactly clean. But I don't see why that would make a difference because all it is is water in the paint anyway. And maybe I'm using too much salt. I don't know, but I don't see anything happening. But I did look up at him and you can kind of see where the um, little paint is going away from the salt. It's taking its sweet time, but it's not like bursting away. I don't see that. See, like. So now I'm making the raised salt painting. Um, step one says to plan out your design and colors. Check. To make it sticky, use your glue to trace your pencil drawing and then sprinkle salt on top of the glue. Check. Step three says prep your paint. So get one plastic cup for each color you want to paint with and fill your pipe up with water and squeeze the water into one cup. So that's all the pipe that is for in this step. I've done both of that. <clears throat> Take the brush and pick up paint from your watercolor palette to mix your cup into your cup of water. I've done that. You may add pigment to your cup several times so it is saturate, saturated. I've done that. Step four is add color to your artwork. Fill your pipette with one of your colors. Slowly draw colors onto the salt line. Watch the color expand into the salt.
So as you can tell, there's a lot of water down here. Um, I did have to make more paint three times to finish going around, but it seems like all the water has gone to the bottom of the page, so maybe I added too much. Um, I wasn't planning on really keeping this one anyway, so it's just going to go in the garbage. So it's been a while and as you can see nothing's really happened still. So there's only one section left, it's splatter painting. So I will need paper, watercolor, water cup, and straw. Not included. Hmm. Well, that might be a problem because I don't have extra straws. Well, so I probably won't be doing this one then since I don't have a straw. And I mean, we had Taco Bell last night, so I could dig through the trash and get that straw, but that would be really gross. So I'm not doing that. So I'm just going to read you to the, the um, directions. So step one says prepare your colors. Two says apply the paint. Either use your brush or pipette to put small amounts of paint water on paper. Try making a design where the paint paddles are near each other. You want these to be little puddles. Add a little water on top if they aren't very wet. Three, blow. Use a straw to blow the paint across the paper. And then ask you questions. How did the paint change shape? What happened when different colors mixed together? What shapes do you see now? Step four says add on to your design. Do you see something in the shape you created? Maybe a creature, a monster, or a flower. Add some extra details like eyes, arms, stems, and leaves to turn your splatter into something more. So that could have actually been really, really fun if I had a straw. So I've been working on this kit for a few hours now and it, and it is fun. And I like the idea that they're putting science behind it so you're using art and science to have fun and I really like that. Um, I do watch a lot of Nerdy Crafter and I think it's fun watching her do craft kits. But one of the big things that bothers her is when it doesn't come with everything you need. And this kit definitely doesn't come with everything you need. And so like the problem I had when doing this is I can't really do some of these steps because like the splatter painting, I don't have a straw. So that just kind of takes away some of the fun from this kit because I don't have the things I need to complete the steps and it's just kind of disappointing. So these are my creations from this kit. 